In this video, I wanna show you how I made this dining room table with removable legs out of solid reclaimed oak barn wood. How's it going guys? So I had a customer that wanted a dining room table done and she wanted it made with removable legs so it was easily moved. So of course I said yes and got to work. So I picked up this truckload full of barn wood I picked that up for about a hundred bucks and it had a lot of really nice pieces in it. So I ended up picking out what I wanted for the tabletop and they were about two inch thick old oak boards. And as you can see they had a lot of nails in them so I got busy denailing it. One of the biggest drawbacks with uh, reclaimed wood is how many nails are embedded in it. And uh, you really want to make sure you get them all out before you go putting them through all your expensive equipment. and ruining your blades. And then with the old nails, the heads will pop off a lot. So what I'll do with that is just take a pair of vice grips, tighten it down on there and use that as, you know, make that act as the nail head. Had to have Cam inspect it, make sure there was no nails left. And as you can see, there was a ton of them in there. So she wanted the table to be 72 inches long by 36 inches wide. So I measured it out and cut it down into more manageable pieces. Uh, then it was time to plane them down and get, them all, get all the boards down to the same thickness. So how I did that is the side of the wood that was gonna be, that was gonna face down below the table, I planed that, that side a bunch of times until they were all the same thickness and then I turned them around and uh, basically just skip plane the top because obviously I want to keep all the saw marks and all that because that's what makes the barn wood the barn wood and gives it the character. So I then jointed one end of each board. Uh, I picked up this cheap Wen jointer from uh, Amazon. It's fully cast iron base and everything. Uh, it's a little undersized for this project, but for most everything I use, it works really well and it was like under 300 bucks. Now I don't know if you noticed, but one side of each board had a bunch of nails in it when I pulled them out. So I jointed the opposite side of that and then ran the side with the nails through my table saw. And I switched the blade on my table saw just in case because there was some nails left in there and I didn't want to ruin a new blade. And I definitely didn't want to ruin my jointer blades. So I laid the top out in a variation I liked and uh, got busy joining them together. Uh, I actually used pocket holes to join them together. Uh, I only wanted to clamp two boards at a time and just glue would have took a while doing that. So I glued the boards together, clamped it, and then used pocket holes so that would allow me to undo the clamps and move on to the next board. Then the next day when that was all dry, I took a metal stud along with my handsaw and just squared off the ends. Then over on my table saw, I measured out the breadboard ends for my, uh, and put it on my table saw sled and cut them down to size. To attach them, I used my small crag jig and drilled pocket holes in each of the boards and then just glued and screwed the breadboard ends on that way. So if you guys are enjoying what you're seeing, definitely please hit that thumbs up button. It'll definitely help out the video. And then also hit that subscribe button for future videos. Then it was time to cut the lags. The top was just about two inches thick, so I think I cut the lags down to 28, 28 and a half inches maybe, to make the dining room table a total of a 30, 30 inches height. And once they were down to height, I cut a little 45 degree off of, just to take the corners down to uh, avoid chipping if the table were to be slid across the table. So I then laid the lags out and uh, where I wanted them, 
made them even on each corner and measured for the aprons. Now each apron was actually a little different here so I had to take careful measurements and then label each leg as well as each apron and I used this piece right here for the aprons and just took my handsaw and cut it down to more manageable size. And then I, I wanted my aprons about two and a half inches, I believe it was. Maybe it was three inches. Uh, I didn't want them too thick because obviously chairs had to fit underneath the table. And uh, to attach the aprons, I used pocket holes. The aprons for this design with the removable legs, they had to be permanently attached to the tabletop. Once we get into the removable legs, you'll understand why. So I took 220 grit sandpaper and just lightly sanded it just to get the rough edges off and leaving the character there. Uh, I did that for the legs as well as the aprons. Here I'm measuring up three inches because three inches were the width of my aprons. And then I took my router and a 45 degree chamfer bit and did that in a three inch length and I'll show you why once we get into the legs. Here I'm just using the pocket holes and attaching the aprons. Here I have a piece of three quarter inch plywood that I cut 45 degrees on each side. I pre-drilled them and then glued it to attach to each apron and this really helps uh, strengthen the aprons as well but the main reason for this is the removable legs so yeah I glued and screwed that on each apron And then with the lag in place, you can see here, I'm sorry I'm in the way a little bit, but where I put that 45 degree chamfer on the lag, I pilot bitted it through it, as you can see right there. So then there's holes in that 45 degree place and holes in the thing, in the lag. And then here I'm using hanger bolts, they're called. Uh, they got just normal thread on one side and it's a lag bolt on the other. And this is how the legs are going to become detachable. So I just pre-drilled a 3 8 drill bit. And then I took two 3 8 nuts and uh, just doubled them up against each other. And this allowed me to give me something to tighten it down on. So I grabbed a socket, took the lag bolt part, and put it into the pilot bit, or put it into the hole there. And just tightened the lag bolt part down in until it was solidly all the way down in there. And then as you can see, I drilled my holes a little too small, so I had to get half inch, I took a half inch drill bit instead and bored them out a little bigger and then there we go that worked a little better but as you can see then just took a flat washer, a lock washer and then 3 8 nuts, tighten them right down and there you go removable legs are as easy as that and uh, once they're tightened, it's, it's very solid. So I did that, repeated that on the other three. If I ever got to do future tables with removable legs, I'll definitely use that design. Here I tilted the table up and I was home alone right now. And this table was heavy, so I walked around trying to figure out how I was going to do this. Lifted it up, finally got it over, but you know, shook my hands off like it was no big deal. 
decided to come back and douche it up a little bit. Anyway, took 220 grit sandpaper and sanded down the top, did a bunch of sanding just to take off all the rough stuff. Uh, as you can see, this new sander I got, it works great, and then that cordless Milwaukee vacuum fits right up to it, so there's no dust. That works really well. And here was another little bit of an issue I had. Uh, the one side of that reclaimed wood was a lot narrower than my breadboard end. So I took my grinder and grinded it off just to make it even so it didn't look so bad. And then sand it off because the grinder burnt it a little bit so I sanded off the burn stuff. And as you can see that just flows a lot better. Uh, I took water-based polyacrylic and put a bunch of coats of that on. Uh, the reason I used the water-based polyacrylic, the customer didn't want it too dark. The good thing about water-based is it doesn't really change the color too much. It just brings out the, the defects and all that in it. Uh, a lot of times the oil-based will give it more of an amber or red hue, and uh, that's just not what I was going after on this one. After about four or five coats of that, I brought it upstairs, labeled all the legs good, assembled it, and then it was time to take pictures of it. Once I got it assembled, I took some pictures, and I really liked how this turned out. Definitely a very rustic piece with full of character, which is what I was going after. Uh, I really like how the nail holes are on the breadboard ends there, and then the saw marks. Uh, tons of character in that piece. I really, really like it. She just picked it up a couple days ago, so it's gone, and she was very happy with it. Thanks a lot for watching the video, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you need to make removable table legs, I hope you learned something. Definitely feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and as always, I'll see you in the next video, guys.